To me, the Panasonic GH4 was made to fly. Incredible 4K resolution in a lightweight, easy to lift camera. It's perfect for drone cinematography. Hi, my name is Brian Harvey. I'm a director and cinematographer, and this is Tim Gould. He's an RC drone expert, and together we're Cloudbreak. We're a professional aerial cinematography team based here in the Outer Banks of North Carolina. We travel worldwide. We do documentaries, feature films, and uh, commercials. Uh, you might have seen our video that we made for the Panasonic GH4 last year that we shot in Mexico. I really love the GH4. It's an amazing camera. It's got stunning 4K ability, and it's really small. It's a perfect camera to fly on the drone. So before you even think about doing any aerial cinematography, you're going to have to spend a lot of time with one of these. This is a trainer. It can take a lot of abuse. and. Safety is always the number one thing you want to consider because these things are very dangerous. You have to practice away from people and you just don't want to injure anybody. So, so I want to talk just a little bit about, uh, again, the three different levels of uh, drones that we have here. Uh, we have an entry level ready to fly drone which has the sports action camera on it. Moving to the middle level hexacopter that we have here, uh, this is a uh, system that would be capable of carrying the GH4 and it does have a, a gimbal uh, to allow for tilting and it does stabilize in, in the roll. Uh, what it doesn't do is uh, allow you to pan. So in order to compose a shot with this copter we're actually having to yaw the aircraft to compose the shot. Now this is perfect for a single person operation but it's not ideal for a professional level. Moving to uh, the octocopter that we have here, it's, um, it's got much more lifting capacity. So we're able to put a three axis gimbal uh, underneath it. And this is the Movi M10. Uh, it allows us to have a two person operation. So I can fly the octocopter and Brian can control the camera independently. Yeah, what's great about this gimbal is, you know, it's got the ability to carry all different kinds of lenses and filter combinations. We can put follow focus on there. Um, it just gives us more flexibility for more professional setup. So before we put this thing in the air, I want to show you a little bit about what we have to do to set up the drone to fly the GH4. This is Cloudbreak Shed Quarters. This is where we work on the drones, and today we have Corey here. Corey's a young filmmaker. Yes. Um, I wouldn't call myself young. But <laughs> yes. But uh, he's Corey's just uh, kind of getting into drones. How long have you been flying? I'm really new to it. Um, I'm having a lot of fun learning. Yeah. And uh, I definitely need some tips and pointers. So before we put the camera on the gimbal, there's just a few base settings with the GH4 that we want to just make sure that we have set properly. First of all, we always want to have the optical image stabilizer set on, on the lens. Um, then we want to be in manual focus mode. Um, the GH4 does do autofocus, and beginners might want to use that feature, but generally pro pros, we're always manual focus for everything. The GH4 is packed with features. It's got tons of customizable menu items. Um, we're not going to go into all those, but I'm just going to show you a few of the basic things you're going to have to set up. Um, first, you're going to want to pick your recording format. Today we're going to pick .mov. Um, recording quality, you know, you can see here we've got different 1920 by 1080. We've got 4K 24p, 4K 30p. That's what we're going to shoot today. Um, and then this is the big one. The exposure mode we put to manual. That's going to allow us to shoot full manual with this camera and lock all of our settings for ISO, aperture, shutter speed, white balance, all of that stuff. The way these gimbals work, it's a combination of passive and active balancing. The passive part is really getting this camera balanced on the gimbal when it's unpowered. You've got tilt, roll, all these different axes that the camera can actually be balanced about. And active balancing is what happens 
after you turn the gimbal on. That's when the accelerometers and gyros are correcting for any additional movements that are introduced from wind or vibrations. The key is when you have it passively balanced, your gimbal doesn't have to work as hard and so you're gonna get better results. The other thing that's really helpful is this HDMI port. This port automatically down converts the 4K signal so that we can wirelessly transmit what the camera sees in the air down to our monitors on the ground. This allows us to frame our shots and see exactly what the camera is seeing. I also should tell you a little bit about the lenses that we use for shooting aerials. The main lens that we use on the GH4 is the Lumix 12 to 35. It's got a great range, but the main reason we use it is that it has the power optical image stabilizer that really helps smooth out the bumps for aerial shooting. If you want an even wider field of view, the Lumix 7 to 14 is a great lens and I really love shooting with that as well. And sometimes when the wind is very calm, we can shoot telephoto shots from the air. And the Lumix uh, makes a great range of different telephoto lenses that you can actually fly on the GH4 for aerial shooting. So this is Jockey's Ridge State Park. Uh, this line of sand dunes is pretty much the same place where the Wright brothers first did their test flights and had the first flight. So it's pretty cool that we get to test our drones here. We have our permit to be here and fly for the, from the state park. And so just on the lines of safety, it's really important that you always uh, check into the airspace requirements and, and the, the regulations for flying drones. If you're a beginner, you can put the GH4 on your drone and just fly around and you're going to get some okay shots. But for professionals and, and I think even for beginners, you really should be flying in full manual mode. The reason we want to do that is we want to have control of the shutter speed, the ISO, the aperture, the focus. We don't want the camera to be making those decisions. We want everything to be fixed and so that we know exactly what we're going to get while we're flying. If you're going to be using the GH4 to shoot video, for sure you're going to need to learn how to use filters in front of the lens. So we always fly with either a polarizer or some ND filter to help control the light coming into the camera. Now when we're on location, this is where we have to make decisions about the aperture, shutter speed, ISO, those sort of things. I'm going to show you the way I like to do it. I'm going to start with the white balance first. So I go in and set the white balance to a fixed thing. We don't want the camera searching for the white balance in the middle of the shot. The next thing we do is go into the ISO and set that. It's a bright sunny day today, so we're going to be at ISO 200. You're going to want to pick the lowest ISO that's going to allow a proper exposure. There's a direct relationship between your shutter speed and frame rate. Your shutter speed should be about double the frame rate. Today we're shooting this project at 30p, so we're going to set our shutter speed at 1 50th or 1 60th, somewhere in that zone. You don't have to be exact, but if you get too far off, your video is not going to look right. It's going to look jittery and just not natural. How do we determine the appropriate aperture? Well, for these kind of aerial shots, we're going for maximum sharpness and maximum depth of field. We want everything to be sharp. Um, so all lenses kind of have a sweet spot for sharpness. Generally, it's 5.6 to 8. So we're going to go ahead and set today at f8. So why can't we just crank it to f16? What happens is there's, uh, it's called diffraction, and you lose sharpness in the lens. So that sweet spot, again, is like around 5.6 or f8. Okay. okay, so we're almost ready to shoot. The last thing we always do is we just kind of pick up the copter so that we can aim the camera in the direction of our shot. And this is where we do our final focus check and final aperture check to make sure that we've nailed focus and exposure. The first thing you do is go ahead and focus on a distant object. Um, you can't really just set the lens to infinity. You really need to pick something, focus. The GH4 has all kinds of really good um, focusing aids, peaking, it's got magnification. So see when that pops into, uh, when the peaking pops in, 
on that tree, then you're good. Um, next thing, we're just going to double check aperture. Go ahead and tap the trigger button. And you can see we're at f8, but we're a little bit um, hot. So we're going to go ahead and roll it up to f11. That's not quite in the sweet spot, but it's close enough. There's a lot of different ways to determine the proper exposure. You kind of have to learn that, but centering the meter is a good place to start. If you're just a beginner at aerial cinematography, it's probably a good idea to stick to wide open shots with few obstacles at first. And this will allow you to just kind of have fun flying the drones and get your big wide shots without having to worry about bumping into something. As you become more skilled with practice, you can try some close proximity shots where you're flying next to and between buildings or trees. These shots are a little bit more dynamic and more interesting, but you wanna make sure you have really good control of your drone before you try these shots. The most advanced and exciting use of drones are tracking shots where you follow in close proximity to moving objects. This usually involves a dual operator setup where one person concentrates on flying the drone and the other person flies the gimbal and frames the shot. Aerial drone shots are an exciting way to elevate any production. Plus, it's a lot of fun. Flying cameras like this has led to a revolution in cinematography, and we're getting shots that just aren't possible any other way. The GH4 is the perfect fit onboard drones and delivers an image worthy of the dramatic shots we're able to capture moving through the air.